Well, I find that I have many things to tell you and not a lot of time, so I'm going to see if I can get everything in that I need to tell you this morning in the time that I have and not make lunch any later than it has to be. The first is, you may be wondering what this bell and the dragon thing is. It's not one that we often hear re read on Sunday. Uh, it's a book that's in the Apocrypha. You may know that the book of Daniel, the, the prophet Daniel, is in the Old Testament. And there are parts of it that when the Bible was originally assembled, uh, those people who put the Bible together decided were not really part of the original story. You might think of it in modern terms, terms as being fan fiction. Someone decided that Daniel was a pretty good character and needed a few more stories, and so people wrote a few more stories. This is one of those additional stories that was written about the prophet Daniel. So it's in the Apocrypha. Uh, it's read often on, on occasions other than Sunday, as is our other parts of the Apocrypha. So there are things out there that we don't hear too often. And it's worth occasionally going in the Bible and, and looking for those parts that you haven't read lately and see what may be there as far as wisdom. This is a pretty good story, you must admit. Uh, the little mystery in how Daniel is going to trip up his opponents uh, when they try to prove that their false god is doing something that the false god cannot do. Second is a, 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 a thoroughly nerdy thing that happened to me this morning. I came in, and, and what I do is I, I have these, these little sheets of lessons that I make up in advance for the day, and I had made this one up on Monday because I didn't have one yet for St. Boniface. And for some reason, I had reason to go back and look at the book that the church puts out where all of the saints' information is kept. And you may know that we keep trying to update this. We, we realize there are still holy people who are in our midst as we go through later years, and we want to remember some of them as well. And so there are always new books being issued. And we're supposed to be using the latest one. It turns out that when I made this up, I was looking at one of the earlier books. And I discovered, much to my dismay, that in fact the lessons were not the ones I was supposed to be reading. I didn't know why that was the case, but I, I went back and very quickly this morning, in the time I had, corrected it. So you heard the lessons that the church tells us we're supposed to hear on the occasion of the Feast of St. Boniface. This, I think, is a useful point for us to imagine that, in fact, the lessons changed we're able to revise what we think is the appropriate thing to read on a particular occasion for a particular reason. And that applies to you and to me as we go through our lives and are looking for our inspiration as well. Going back always to the same place may not always be the best system. That in fact, our thinking will evolve as we age and grow and mature as Christians and it may be that at different times there are different things we need to hear to inspire us, to comfort us, to strengthen us, and to remind us whose we are and what we're supposed to be doing. So, a lesson to me this morning that I should be keep, keeping better track of where I'm looking for my information, but that in fact some of that is worth reading, even if it wasn't what I originally intended to read or to say. And the third, then, is poor St. Bonibus, who now gets third place in my comments this morning. He was an Anglo-Saxon monk in the 700s who decided that he, would feel, he felt, felt a call to be a missionary, so he went to what is now the Netherlands, didn't have a whole lot of success, went back to England, was encouraged again to go, but this time went first to Rome and got an official uh, instruction from the Pope what he was supposed to do. The Pope sent him back to the Netherlands, but on the way he discovered there was good stuff happening in Germany, or what's now Germany, so he stopped there and got a whole bunch of stuff going. He started some dioceses and started some monasteries that are still in existence down to this day. Um, he also made good political contacts with the kings who were the ancestors of Charlemagne. I mean, you, I'm tempted to say they were in France, but none of these countries actually existed at the time. <clears throat> So he's, he's considered to be one of the fathers of Europe. Uh, all the things that he did in what is now France and now Germany and now the Netherlands in forming structures in the church that eventually became structures in politics too. Uh, until eventually he decided he'd had enough of all of that. He gave up his job as an archbishop, went back to Frisia in the Netherlands where he had begun his missionary work and there was martyred because it still was a pagan country, which seems like an odd thing to imagine now. Uh, while he was waiting for some people to come for confirmation, a, a band of Frisian pagans came and killed him and his companions. So, 
again, there are lessons in it, I think, for us about where we think we're headed in one direction but ended up, end up heading in another direction. When perhaps we've, we've even received an official instruction to go do one thing, but along the way, somehow the Holy Spirit intervenes and tells us, well, this is going on to pay attention to this. And that in the end, sometimes we cannot see the end of our works. I'm sure Boniface had no idea where the things that he began would go and how many of them would exist so many years later. So, a good example to us of that image that we're given periodically in the church that one person plants, another waters, and another reaps the harvest. Sometimes our job is simply to do our tending of the garden, trusting that someone is coming along behind us who will harvest the fruit, and discover what God intends its use to be. Amen.